So these materials have crystal structures that are based on pyramid-like tetrahedral arrangements of atoms or molecules, and typically they combine common inorganic and organic components, often methyl ammonium hydride. In solution, they can be printed on glasses or film over several square centimeters. They are also less sensitive to impurities than are expensive crystalline semiconductors such as gallium arsenide. So, as I already discussed, this ABX3 is very important here. This is the general formula, and uh, this uh, complete structure is uh, described in in such a way that this halide organic inorganic proscite absorbers having the molecular formula ABX3 where X is uh, an atom of halide maybe iodine, chlorine, bromide, bromine or it may be fluorine but fluorine doesn't work because of tolerance factor this tolerance factor is very important and for perfect cubic T is equal to 1 and if his T is in between 0.8 to 1 it will be a tetragonal structure and if T is less than 0.8 it will be orthorhombic and if T is greater than 1 then it will not be a 3 dimensional kind of structure it will be a 2 dimensional structure means we have uh, layers of organic and inorganic molecules so usually methyl ammonium lead iodide is used as an absorber and its structure is already demonstrated here in this cartoon where uh, this, uh, this is lead purple ball are iodine and pink is lead and unattached molecules are organic cation. So these, these are basically ionic semiconductors. Ionic semiconductors are really very new because most of the photovoltaic semiconductors are uh, covalent bond based semiconductors except cadmium telluride and cadmium selenide which are also ionic semiconductor and they are pretty stable and the commercially available solar cells based on cadmium telluride also having great promise. Although cadmium telluride and cadmium selenide semiconductors are not well demonstrated till now but in the coming time, we will be we will be looking in the textbooks also about the ionic character based uh, semiconductors. Okay. So here, if you see carefully in this uh, uh, structure, we have lad one lad and six halogen or halide atoms. They join together and this kind of uh, 8 PBX6 make one cube and in this octahedra we have unattached molecule of organic cation. So this cation remains uh, in this cage of this structure which is uh, a although very uh, uh, interesting for these kind of materials because uh, this unattached molecule always remains in the uh, vibrating state because at at t is equals to zero we don't have p is equals to zero experimentally but theoretically people consider it but uh, in, as an experiment experimentalist t is equals to 0 uh, 
we don't we never achieve p is equals to zero because if we go to the liquid nitrogen temperature 77 kelvin again there is a temperature if go to the liquid helium temperature then we have 4 kelvin and even less than that if we we, we talk to nano pico uh, base pico level uh, uh, temperature range but there is always uh, some temperature so there will be a phonon there and this phonon is very interestingly uh, involved in the so many uh, important aspects starting from charge transport mechanism to the other uh, structural mechanism so although why x-ray diffraction we can obtain the crystal structure and even uh, that we can also record the absorption structure of the semiconductor and uh, if the, this uh, absorption spectra will show the tail states and tail state is the signature of the lattice vibration here so we can observe clearly the lattice vibration by the spectroscopy and by x-ray diffraction it is uh, also means uh, the fed points or fed diffraction also give the vibrations but it is not very much visible there and uh, other than this uh, optical absorption spectroscopy by electron measurements electronic measurements like charge uh, transport measurements we can which is more sensitive to any kind of irregularity in the crystal structure so the charge transport measurements can also give us important information to analyze the data so this this is very important material and uh, this material has pretty good scope in academic as well as in industrial research so this material with high crystallinity and uh, uh, the with some defects we can fabricate a good thin film and that thin film gives important information of absorption of light so here are some challenges i will discuss the challenges uh, in my in the last of my lecture so challenges if I, I i i would like to say here also so lead is a to lead is a toxic element here so lead toxicity and if we alter we use alternative element like tin then uh, tin is also has a major uh, concern of stability because tin has two uh, sn2 plus and sn4 plus states and these states are not that much stable okay so here we have discussed couple of things which is which are uh, very interesting and uh, some of the properties like uh, these materials show the uh, impurity based uh, or defect based system although defect defects uh, hamper the charge transport and also uh, not good for the stability of the material because at the grain boundaries the air and water molecules may hamper the device or the thin films now let me come to the next section means how because here in this 
reference the course there are some participants uh, young participants i should say who recently started their career in teaching and research so i have some experimental section also if some experimentalists are there they can uh, see how we can synthesize these molecules so synthesis also of methyl ammonium iodide is not very very difficult we we can take methylamine and in around bottom flash at 0 degree centigrade and in the presence of hydro iodic acid we can uh, make the reaction and uh, with, with constant rotatory evaporator and then after crystallization in ethanol we can have this material by drying in vacuum as i mentioned here in my lecture that these molecules or these materials are soluble in uh, organic solvents like dmf and we can make a good tra good transparent solution of these materials and by some techniques like uh, drop casting or uh, spin coating dip coating there are so many methods of deposition of these materials to make a thin film because the optical absorption of about 400 to 500 nanometer thick film is pretty good so we need a transparent conducting electrode first like indium tin oxide coated or fto coated glass and uh, uh, for example if i want to fabricate a uh, cs3 ns3 pb i cl means it is a mixed halide kind of molecule based uh, peroxide on glass then in this molar ratio 3 is to 1 of mai and pbcl2 in anhydrous dmf the concentration of pbcl2 and mai was kept uh, in this molar ratio and with the homogeneous solution can be obtained by string precursors overnight at 60 degree centigrade and we can these are the steps of the fabrication of the of the solar cell like uh, firstly we take fto pattern glass fto pattern glass here and uh, then we used to coat a thin film of tio2 at 2000 rpm for 30 second and then anneal at 450 degree centigrade and after that this precursor of this uh, mix halide was coated over there at 2 2000 rpm 30 seconds 100 degree centigrade for 40 minutes and after that we need to coat a whole transport layer here and uh, then we need to anneal it so people are using spiro omtad which is a organic molecule for whole transport which is giving a very good efficiency more than 25 or uh, like 24 25% but in my laboratory one of my phd student uh, used different new whole transport materials also so it is a planar device architecture planar planar peroxide ar device architecture is very very good because if we have to fabricate a large area devices then uh, this is very promising then we need to anneal it and after that the another electrode will be deposited there so this is a complete uh, device means all steps has been explained here how we need to do the processing so if you see means uh, this is not very very difficult if you have 
an inert, inert environment of glow box in your lab, then you can make the device in inert environment and in open air environment also this device, this device works. So, what exactly happens when we shine the light here? Then uh, light uh, is absorbed by 450 nanometer thick mixed halide uh, layer and uh, then there is a uh, uh, electron and hole generation and uh, these electron and hole they are uh, separated and then collected towards the respective electrodes. So this is the working mechanism of this mixed halide based or even other uh, single halide based perovskite devices. So this is the full story of the fabrication and the working. So here there are some other important points like how we need we need to choose the electron transport layer or hole transport layer and how smooth or efficient electron and hole collection is uh, achieved by choosing the specific material so it is also a very separate lecture but today we are not giving too much detail of this. So I want to also show some important aspect which is a, a recent research in our group. We have fabricated these mixed halide perovskites and by some solvent vapor, vapor treatments we have seen very interesting effects. If you see here uh, these are the devices and by one of my PhD student, he has made this uh, solvent vapor treatment arrangement by which the chlorobenzene or some of the organic solvents they are uh, they get vaporized and we can control the flow of these vapors and then treat it the perovskite films and we found very interesting results. If you see here, as deposit films and uh, heat assisted solvent vapor treated perovskite films. So we have by solvent vapor treatments we have better crystallinity and better surface coverage of these films. And uh, if you see the optical absorption, so solvent vapor treated films show comparatively better or more absorption and uh, uh, the large grain size increases the distance of light propagation due to back scattering of incident light from the comparative rough surfaces. So here if you see uh, as deposited film shows uh, uh, efficiency as given here. Well, the efficiency is not that much high because these devices are not fabricated in all ideal conditions. But we have compared in the same uh, atmosphere fabrication and uh, their uh, uh, vapor treatment. So this vapor treatment increases, like increases its VOC and uh, GSC and even fill factor. So it was a very good and very interesting work and uh, this work was published in uh, Royal uh, Society Journal RSC Advances and here uh, we have means very good interesting surface physics. Okay, so in this work particularly as I give, given you two examples as we have used with MEHTPV which is a conjugated polymer so it also acts as a whole transport layer and uh, uh, we have given some treatment of to the perovskite thin films and by 
heat has assisted the solvent vapor treatment means we have an improvement on the surface morphology and the quality of the film and it finally gives a better device performance so this is also another work in a different device uh, configuration so here we have used single halide and P pcbm bulk hydrogen and solar cell in classical perovskite architecture so here if you see we have used very uh, another whole transport layer and uh, this is p3st and uh, so this is this is pcbm and uh, single and methyl ammonium lead iodide single halide so it is showing a very good uh, scanning electron microscope so crystal uh, the crystallinity and uh, uh, the surface coverage is, is really good here and uh, here if you see see so interesting and so big uh, grains we have achieved and these grains have less voids and means loose coverage of surface so the surface morphology of these films is good and uh, 2 to 3 micron large grains we have observed yeah so which is also a good work and it is published in a good journal so here we have fabricated by two step method here so pbi to film containing lot of o uh, lots of holes and uh, vacancies so when we coat it like this and then we have a dense uh, film and this is showing a better result so when the methyl ammonium iodide is deposited onto, onto PBI2 film it reacts rap rapidly with PBI2 and due to larger surface area and porous surface morphology it forms smaller grain size and it could be possible that due to porous morphology of PBI2 the methyl ammonium iodide sheep inner layer of PBI2 that also pose small grains are forced out to fill the holes of the film due to extension of the film volume by intercalation reaction whereas this uh, PCBM and PBI2 film forms very dense layer and when uh, we have a more better crystallinity and better coverage this is the AFM of these, these films which is also giving very interesting results if you see here the lattice parameter and other uh, things has been discussed here ok so this is also showing good uh, UV visible absorption. So, see, means if we fabricate the PCBM, larger grain obtained, and because of uh, larger grains and better film, we have more absorption here. So, ultimately, more absorption provides better efficiency. So, here I should say some other characterizations are also given I show you, I am showing you means these characterizations like FTIR and uh, other characterizations are very important for uh, understand to understand the photophysics and uh, and optoelectronic properties of these materials so here we also observe the photoluminescence quenching in the samples and see here if you see uh, the efficiency of these films and we add some uh, PCBM in the proxite then it is improved in a significant way ok so from this uh, work we can con conclude that the uh, 
सिंगल हेलाइट एंड पीसीबीएम बल्क हाइड्रोजन संक्रोस्कैट फिल्म्स आर वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग एंड सोइंग वेरी गुड कॉम्पैक्ट परोस्कैट फिल्म्स ऑफ लार्जर ग्रेन्स एंड दिस ग्रेन्स सोइंग बेटर फोटोवोल्टिक परफॉर्मेंस ओके सो नो लेट अस मूव टुवर्ड्स द other challenges and commercialization for this uh, technology so as i already mentioned here this technology is very important for uh, the and a great future but there are some challenges in device stability like under realistic operational conditions the environmental impact of the modules with concerned around lead and tin is still being debated the efficiency loss when upscaling to large area devices and remaining gap in the fundamental material physics so these two issues like lead is a major concern and uh, another is the stability stability uh, generally it it is because of several reasons because uh, generally undergoes degradation of exposure to moisture as well as uv irradiation radiations and uh, replacement of tin Repla replacement of lead by tin also showing some issues so we need to discuss in detail the commercialization challenges for the final conclusion of this technology